Hey, this is Trout Pitten. Let's talk about how to get nymphs down on a tight line. And not just the nymphs, but any weight, whether it's split shot, drop shot, streamer, weighted nymph. As soon as you're trying to get under the water, you need weight. What we want to do is learn to allow that weight to do its work. It could be heavyweight, lightweight, but it's all going to fall. And we want to allow it to fall and then help lead it through. We need to kind of acknowledge that all weight falls. I could pick out a number 18 beadhead pheasant tail with a two millimeter bead, drop it in the water out there that's thigh deep and going about that fast, and it's gonna get down. I'm gonna drop it, and it'll be down. If, if the weight is unattached to a tippet, it just falls. So we need to acknowledge, we need to understand that it's the tippet that keeps our weight from falling. That never changes. You can go to 8X, it'll have less effect on that weight than 5X or 4X, but that effect is still there. If it wasn't, then your nymph would already be down in like a second or two seconds as soon as it went into the water. So we, again, we need to learn to allow weight to fall and then help lead it through. One of the best ways to allow the weight to fall is to lift. I'm gonna do something I call lift and lead. Now, I'm not talking about lift in the nymph or lift in the weight. We simply lift to relieve the tension and allow the weight to fall to do its job. And then we're gonna lead through. I do it out here, I mean, all the time. Every time I'm using weight, I'm thinking about that lift and lead. Well, you stop thinking about it and you just do it. All right, you ready? Here we go. All right, let's talk about this lift and lead. But first, the most important thing to understand about a river when you're trying to get underneath the surface is that all the good things, almost all the good things in a river happen down in the strike zone. There is a cushion of water down on the bottom of this riverbed, on the bottom of every riverbed. There's a cushion of water that's going slower. You can't see it. All you can see is the surface current. Even if you can see through and see that riverbed, you, you can't see to judge the speed of the strike zone. But the strike zone is down there going slower than the top. It's slower, of course, because it's banging into rocks and has to go around them. Going in, banging into tree parts has to go up over them. So it's a slower current to water. In this river, it's probably about 10, 12 inches tall. In another river, it might only be six inches tall, maybe even four inches. If you have just a simple gravelly bottom, that strike zone might only be four to six inches tall. It's not two feet tall off that riverbed, I'll tell you that. It's where all the good things happen. Now, if you find a day where trout wanna come up and eat out of the strike zone, that's fantastic. That's great. It's a lot of fun. You can fish then a light system that allows the flies to just drop through and drop, a, fish a long drop, and eventually maybe those flies make it into the strike zone. And that's a point is when, when trout are eating, coming up and eating on the surface, and especially mid-column, and people will often think about, oh, it, emerging insects, they're coming up mid-column and eating them. Well, they're still, they're still eating the nymphs that are down in the strike zone as well. All the good things in the river happen in the strike zone. The trout are not sitting mid-column. In a lake, they'll sit mid-column, you know, or many different levels. In this river, those trout have their bellies on the riverbed, and their face, their head, is right in the strike zone. They're eating in the strike zone. That's where the nymphs are being dislodged or just deciding to swim, up to, swim over the next rock or just lift off and drift. All the good stuff happens in the strike zone. So let's say then our goal for nymphing, usually, is to get in the strike zone. And I'd rather be there sooner than later. So I wanna use that weight, the weight I'm using, I wanna allow it to do its job and fall through pretty quickly to get in that strike zone. Some days I'll set up a longer drop on purpose if I find those trout feeding up here. But I'm telling you, most days throughout the season, it's a strike zone ride that catches the most fish. So I wanna allow that weight and those nymphs to get down in there. And then I don't want it, once they're established in that strike zone, I don't wanna set, I don't wanna touch and then have to set. I wanna glide the nymphs through the strike zone. The strike zone is so important that there are many days when trout will even eat, if I'm fishing two nymphs, trout will eat the upper fly when the upper fly is going strike zone speed. When I get the lower fly that's slowing things down, they'll come up out of the strike zone, but eat something that has slowed down. Or many times we find trout 
on a, let's say we're, I'm fishing a longer drop or even just what we're gonna try to do in here, but get the flies down. Well, I think, I mean, we could see it. Trout are often waiting for that nymph to get into their zone and then they eat. We see it all the time. We're gonna watch this cider. We're gonna see it slow down and then bam, trout eats. It's dropping, the cider's kind of going top current speed, the cider slows down, fish eats. Again, get the nymph into the strike zone just as soon as possible. So the best way to do that, I think, is to lift the slack off the water. Let's talk about that. Hey, I'm proud to tell you this video is sponsored by our good friends over at Squala. Squala came on the scene a couple of years ago and quickly established themselves as builders of some of the finest fly fishing gear on the market. They make waders, jackets, shirts, and pants so well designed you hardly notice them. Squala gear is built for die-hard anglers. It's gear designed by fishermen and built for fishing. These carbon waders have really become my favorite. They are built for exactly what we do out here every day. They keep you dry, keep you comfortable, keep you fishing. From the thermo line of merino wool tops and bottoms to the sun shirts, like the Soul Tactical hoodie, to their jackets, insulation, and waders, Squala hits the mark over and over. So for you trout bitten regulars, Squala is offering a discount code of 10%. Go to squalafishing.com and use the code TROUTBITTEN10. Thanks so much to everyone out there and to Squala for supporting the Trout Bitten Project. All right, let's think about this lift then. We're gonna lift to keep tension off the flies. I was saying, you wanna allow the weight to do its job. Allow that weight to fall. And again, if it wasn't attached to tip it, it's, it would fall. Always remember that. Unattached to tippet, every fly is gonna fall pretty darn quick. So we need to do the right thing with the tippet. It's tippet management. So I'm gonna throw the nymphs upstream. This is what we do to get a dead drift. You throw it upstream, and of course the river is pushing the flies back to you and creating slack. So what we do with that slack is the most important thing. You can recover slack in three different ways. You can recover with the line hand, and I prefer a pulley retrieve. We did a full video on that. And then you can do two things with the rod tip. You can lead with the rod tip, which we'll get to in a second, or you can just lift the slack off the water. By lifting my rod tip, just lifting my rod tip, I allow the flies to kind of fall underneath. My buddy said it's like a pendulum effect. You know, the flies go in there, and I lift this rod tip, and the flies continue to fall. By keeping the tension off them, they, fl they fall so much quicker. If you put it in there and you lead right away, they don't fall nearly as quickly. Lift to keep the tension off the flies, allow them to fall. So there really are seven different ways to get the fly deeper, and we did a full video on that. You can make sure everything goes in one seam. That's a good way to do it. Then there's no cross lead, and the fly can just cut right through and slice. You could tuck it in. You can vary a tuck cast to really push the fly down in there. You can give the fly a little bit of grace with that tuck cast. You can add weight. We've been through all of that. That's the easy one. Everybody thinks I'm gonna add more weight, but I'm telling you, you can use the weight that you have a lot of times already on there and then lift. This is a really good way to allow the weight that you have to just fall to the riverbed without putting tension on it with this lift. You can see what I'm doing. So we're fishing, tuck that in. Sticking the landing on the cider, that's key, so that once I have control over the system, once I have control over the cider and contact, then I can trust that cider to teach me about what's going on, going on underneath. The cider is very much bossed around by the flies then, and that there it's slowed down, by the zone that the flies are in. The speed of the flies is what's gonna dictate the speed of my cider, because all I'm trying to do is maintain that contact as I lift there, and now I'm gonna lead through. All right, so I'm tucking this in, I'm just gonna lift. Now if I, if I lead those flies right away, if I bring them downstream, make, maintain contact that, that way by leading the flies downstream, then I'm not getting down. You can see that. Now I'm trying real hard not to move those flies, but I'm, I, I never really got down in there. I never saw a slowdown. But I feel like I'm letting the flies get down. However, I'm not lifting. Now, if I just lift, watch, I'm gonna touch that bottom real quick, right? There, it's down. And I didn't lead, so I'm showing you that those flies are on the bottom. That's why it stopped. The flies are literally laying on the bottom right now because I lifted and allowed the flies to fall. There, I took it out. Lucky I didn't actually stick. Do this again. If I just lead through, all I'm doing is maintaining contact. I am actually trying real hard to let those flies get down. I can even let that cider get a little bit lower. Come on, flies, get down, get down, get down, get down. Come on, come on. Right about there, they, there, they slowed down. It took me all of that time, eight feet, 10 feet or whatever. This time, if all I do is lift, and again, take that rod tip just up, follow that tree. If you can find something that's, you know, vertical, then my rod tip should only go up the tree and then I'll lead through. Not real high, 
And again, not moving the flies, not lifting the flies. This seems very counterintuitive. You're saying lift. Well, don't lift the flies, just, lead, just lift the slack that's coming back. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're just gonna lift, 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 and right there I'm on the bottom, right? That time it got to the bottom and it drifted through a little bit and it's, it's just bumping around down there. Again, I can lift, lift, there. I'm on the bottom already. You can see it. Now I'm not even leading. I'll lift, lift, get it in way sooner and now I, I lead through. Now that's pretty good. Let me point this out too. A lot of the little jiggles that you're seeing on the cider, it's not the flies touching the bottom. It's the flies being down in that strike zone and the, the currents are kind of moving. It's not ticking every time you see that cider just jiggling around a little bit. Like watch this again. Cider, cider, cider. There, it slowed down. And all that little nervousness of the cider, what that really means is I'm allowing the flies to kind of do their own thing. I don't have super direct contact all the time. If I wanted it, I could have it. It's a contact nymphing system, tight line nymphing. We can be pure tight to the flies. I could really straighten that cider out and have really no jumps on it, hardly at all. Just nice and stable all the way through, but that doesn't allow it to fall. And you'll see as I'm lifting, you get that kind of shaky, almost nervous cider. I lift, allow the flies to fall, the cider slows down, and now I better lead. And again, it's, it's imperfect. You're not gonna get that transition perfect all the time. I don't really want to touch the bottom. I'll try here to just lift, lift, lift. Then yeah, now I need to lead through. Again, all that shakiness, it's kind of a good thing. And it's not touching the bottom there. I never tap the bottom until the very back. There I go, leading through, leading through, good stuff. I was able to lead it all the way through that time. All those little shakes on the cider, that's just the current moving those flies a little bit, moving that line. Now I'm getting good drifts because I've been through here a bunch of times. I've used kind of well, the repetition of going through the same lane to, to really help, there, I touched the bottom. There, it, it unstuck itself. I'm using the repetition to really refine the seam, get the flies in and lead them through. All right, remember then, the lift and lead. They're both, they're gonna work together. Sometimes I'm almost robotic about it. I'll lift, 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 and then I'll lead. I think I am kind of very deliberate about it. The lift is tough. It is, it's kind of tough. You almost push that rod tip into the, into the air a little bit. Lift and lift and lift and try and not to lead. And that's tough, but I think the lead is even harder. I think it's the hardest thing we have to do out here. I often say like the, the lead is the fishing part. You're allowing the fly to fall and now lead it. You're fishing it. You're kind, you are, you're moving it. Again, I like to just think of helping it not to fall anymore. You want to find that balance between the fly and then the minor tension that you have to that fly or that weight, find that balance just so it doesn't fall anymore. That's the goal. Not to move it through unnaturally, but just so it doesn't fall anymore. And that's tough. The lead is hard. It's also imperfect. You're gonna be leading through, you got this perfect drift and bang, you hit a, you hit a tall rock. They're critical skills, both of them. Lift and lead. Hope that helps you out. Fish hard, friends.